All right, what's going on, y'all? Broken Games HDR back at it again with another video. Uh, so the 2023 Game Awards happened last night, um, and usually I do stream this every year, but I wasn't able to last night because I had to be out at an event mingling and being social, unfortunately. Um, so I was kind of like, damn, I'm going to miss the awards. I ain't going to get to, uh, you know, stream it. And I think the part I enjoy most is, you know, just socializing with, with the viewers. Uh, not some sometimes not is not even necessarily the award show. That's the best part. Now, after reviewing and watching all of these trailers, I got to say I'm not that upset that I missed this show. Um, maybe I would have felt differently if I watched it live, but I it maybe I'm off base with this. But I think last year's show was better, at least from an announcement standpoint, um, because a lot of the trailers, and I'm going to review, you know, all the winners. Uh, of the categories, well, not all of them, all the relevant categories that I care about, but I'm going to talk about those, go over those, and also uh, the trailers um, and the games that were announced. But based on the games that were announced, a lot of them, I feel like I was pretty either uninterested, indifferent about them, just flat out don't care. There was really only a few games, and there was a lot. Like when I was going through all of the trailers of the, of the games that were announced, I was like, God damn, these are a lot of trailers. And I was like, this is a lot of games I really don't feel either way about. I'm just neutral, indifferent, don't, don't care. I was like, damn, I don't care about this. So, um, so first, let's, let's go over the winners. Let's, let's do that. Um, oh, wait, no, this is the, uh, these are the trailers. Uh, where are the winners? That's still the trailers. Okay, here we go. All right, so game of the year, no surprise, went to Baldur's Gate 3. I think most of us saw that coming a mile away. Um, some people thought that, you know, maybe there was a possibility that Tears of the Kingdom uh, could have won, or even Alan Wake 2. You know, Alan, Alan Wake 2, you know, came out of nowhere and, you know, blew people's minds. Y'all know how I feel about it. I'm sorry, I couldn't get, I played it for three hours and I was like, no, I'm turning this off. Uh, that's just how how I was about it. I, I don't, you know, and I don't care how much people, you know, stroke the game. I'm never going back to it respectfully as somebody who loved the first Alan Wake. I'm never going back to two. Um, but yeah, we, we knew it was really between Al, uh, Baldur's Gate three and tears of the kingdom. And like I said, late uh, Alan Wake, Alan Wake two came, came up. Um, so yeah, no surprise here from what I can tell it deserves game of the year. Um, I do actually want to play Baldur's Gate 3, but when it comes to games like that that are like 100 hours, I'm like, bro, I can't play that, right? And it just, I can't play games like that at any time. I have to be like, I have to have a lot of time allotted to me um, at, one, at one time because there's no point in playing a game like Baldur's Gate 3 for like 30 minutes and then you got to put it down because you got to do something else. You know what I'm saying? You need like, I need like a weekend where I can at least put a whole lot of hours into it. And then after that point, I'm okay with putting, you know, 30 minutes, an hour, continually playing it over time. But I need like a good amount of time to like really dive, uh, to really dive into it. And that's how I am with these huge games. So, and I actually, and I hate having a backlog, but I actually do have a backlog just because there were so many good games that came out this year. Um, so eventually, eventually, maybe I'll get, I'll get to Baldur's Gate 3. Uh, but congratulations to Larian. Um, best game direction, Alan Wake 2. Best narrative, Alan Wake 2. This is very similar to what happened with God, with God of War and Red Dead Redemption. No, was it God of War and Red Dead Redemption 2? Was it? Or, or am I confusing that with the... Yeah, I think it was God of War and Red Dead Redemption 2, right? Where Red Dead Redemption 2 was sweeping up everything. They were sweeping up every category prior to Game of the Year, and then they gave the Game of the Year to um to God to God of War uh, 2018. So this is this looks very similar to that year. Game direction, narrative, best art direction, Alan Wake 2, but Game of the Year, Baldur's Gate 3, best score, Final Fantasy 16, uh, best audio design, Hi-Fi Rush. Uh, best performance, uh, Neil Newbon, Baldur's Gate 3. Uh, best games, uh, games for Impact, Chia or Tuchia. Uh, best ongoing game, Cyberpunk 2077. Best indie game, Sea of Stars. Uh, best debut game, Cocoon. 
Uh, sea of Stars is actually on my list to get to also. Um, what else we got? Uh, don't care about mobile game. Community support. Went to Baldur's Gate 3. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Uh, best AR, VR, AR game, Resident Evil Village. Um, I, I feel like that could have went to Synapse. Um, innovation and accessibility, Forza Motorsport. Best action game, Armored Core Fire, uh, Armored Core 6, Fires of Rubicon. I mean, I, I liked Armored Core 6. I feel like it's pretty over... I, I feel people overhype that game. I think that game is just like okay and good. Some people think that this game is like game of the year. <laughs> uh caliber and i'm like i don't know what game y'all played but uh apparently we didn't play the same thing and that's not that's really not slandering uh armored core 6 it's just not what people make it out to be um let's see what a uh, best action adventure game that went to tears of the kingdom uh best rpg baldur's gate 3 obviously uh best fighting game street fighter 6 seems like they got that right best family game which is usually a nintendo winner or a nintendo category uh super mario wonder best sports slash racing game forza motorsport i saw online a lot of people were actually upset at this and felt like this is a typo right here by the way i think uh yeah it is because it's motor fest right it's not moto fest some people felt like the crew motor fest should have won and i'm like where did this the crew fandom come from i i don't know if it was just fanboyism and people were mad that people just didn't want for Forza Motorsport to win. Or there is an actual The Crew Motorfest fandom out there that appeared out of nowhere that I didn't know about prior. Because I'm like, where did where did y'all come from? I didn't see any of this type of like love or fandom for The Crew Motorfest prior. Um, as a matter of fact, I saw most people saying the game was ass. But, but maybe that's my timeline. Uh, best sim strategy game, Pikmin 4. Um, I'm kind of surprised that one over all these others. Like, well, City Skylines 2 was kind of botched at launch. Uh, this is a remake. I love, even though I love that Company of Heroes 3. Yeah, so I guess. Uh, best multiplayer. <laughs> Come on, bro. Come on, bro. What are we doing here? <laughs> like, this is. Y y do y'all see what I'm talking about? When I say, in my opinion, gaming is better than ever except in the multiplayer space we have Baldur's gate 3 winning best multiplayer game that's all you know need to know about the landscape of multiplayer games right now single player games i think it's 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 not the best like ever but it's you get what i'm saying at, at this point at where we are, I don't think you can complain about the state of affairs when it comes to single player games. You know, even those that be like, oh, you know, th there's some people who always believe gaming will always be better before those people. Are, oh, oh, everything was better before. You know, those th there, there are those people out there that everything that comes before is always better. Just old weirdos who who believe that retro retro merchants, whatever the hell you want to call them. Um, but what? This this is this is be this is bewildering and confusing, bro. Like because go go back like a two gens ago, this category for best multiplayer game looks extremely different. These the like these are more some of these are more just like like bro. These, at least, are games that are not necessarily multiplayer games. They're just games that have a multiplayer component or feature, if you get what I'm saying. Multi when I think of multiplayer games, like the, the, the multiplayer part of it is the focus. I ain't going to linger on it, but yeah, I think it's uh, pathetic. Um, not that these are bad games, but you know what I'm saying. Um, content create, we don't care. Best esports, we don't care. Best yeah, esports stuff, nobody cares. Most anticipated game, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, well deserved. Um, the best adaptation, um, Last of Us won that. Uh, player's voice, uh, this category is 100% voted on by fans for their favorite game 2023, Baldur's Gate 3. Okay. And those are the winners. Um, 
yeah, nothing. I don't think nothing crazy here. Uh, nothing crazy here aside from that. I think multiplayer category or, or whatever. All right, now let's get to the game announcements. All right, Brothers, A Tale of Two Sons remake announced. Uh, this is a remake of the game that came out in 2013. Joseph Forrest is behind this. Um, comes out February 28th. Uh, I would probably, I didn't play the original. I would probably play the remake if at the time when this comes out, I have like nothing else on my plate to play, which I find doubtful. Oh, this, doesn't this come out right before Final Fantasy VII? Uh, Rebirth, doesn't Rebirth come out the 28th? Hold on, let me check. I, I think so, right? Uh, Final Fantasy, let's see. Yep, February. Oh, yeah, there's no chance. There's no chance I'm playing this. I was about to say, like, if I have absolutely nothing else to play around the time that this comes out, that's the only way. I, not that I I know it was like from what I remember, it was pretty praised originally, the original game. Um, So I have no doubt, especially since Joseph Forrest is behind uh the remake. I, did, I, I think he worked on the original, too, but, you know, he just wasn't as known at that time. Um, Either way. Yeah, there's no chance I'm playing this. No chance. Um, that's just bad timing. Um, Pony Island 2, Panda Circus, don't care. Rise of the Golden Idol. Um, this is a, some detective game follow up to the case of the Golden Idol. Don't care. Usual June is a narrative action game. Don't care. Uh, Har Harmonium, the musical. Uh, this is a game. This is a musical game that stars a deaf girl. Uh, it's like a Disney musical as they, uh, describe it. Don't care. Windblown is a game from the developers behind Dead Cells. Don't care. And by the way, I've, I've obviously watched all these trailers. I'm not saying I don't care about these games just off of like face value and looking at the thumbnail. I've watched all of these. Uh, Thumper? I like Thumper. So their new spiritual successor. This game is like a spiritual successor. Uh, it's called Thrasher uh, to the uh, Thumper to 2016 Thumper, which was a rhythm game. I would play, this is another one of those games I would play if I had literally nothing else to play, but uh, I doubt that'll be the case. I don't think this has a release date yet. Um, Dave the Diver, don't care. World of Goo 2, don't care. Metaphor Re Fantasio, don't care. Uh, because this game seems to, I think they sh originally showed this at um, one of the Xbox show, one of those previous Xbox shows, and it seems very, very similar to Persona. And y'all know how I feel about the Persona main games. I don't like them. This seems even more Persona than Persona. But maybe it's different. It, it could be different. I got to see a little bit more. But I doubt I doubt it's something I'm going to care about. So as, as of right now, don't care. Um, Exodus, this is from some ex-Bioware developers. It's a mixed bag. When, when, when developers from a, a, a company leave and form their own company and make their own game, it's a mixed bag as far as the results go. So, but it's a sci-fi game. Yeah, I got to say right now, I don't care. God of War Ragnarok free, uh, free DLC um, called Valhalla. And it comes out on the 12th. Uh, so my problem with this, and some people don't feel the same as I do. I prefer DLC to come out. I keep saying this. I, you know, I sound like a broken record at this point. I like DLC for a game that I care about to come out as soon as possible after the, the original, the base game releases. Because I'm already in that mode. I'm already in that realm of playing and caring about this game. My muscle memory is right there. Muscle memory is very important to me when I play a game. I hate feeling rusty. I hate feeling like a, I hate relearning controls right and some people feel like oh no you could relearn the game in five, mm, five minutes the, when i play a game right first first of all i play on the hardest difficulty um in all these games so maybe like for other people who don't do that relearning the game and the timing and the muscle memory is a little bit easier but me i have like a certain and i think all people do this when you play like action games like this you have a certain flow and 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 uh and a certain like, you know, um, you know, you go through your progressions of how you play and the moves you do um, and everything like that, the timing of a game. So like everybody has a certain go to, OK, I do this first and then I do this move and then I do this, you know, all, all the combos and things like that. Unless you're one of those people who just do the does the absolute basic um, moves and, and 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 don't really tap into all the abilities. I'd be trying I'd be doing everything when I play these games like God of War and shit like that. I 
I utilize all the move sets as much as possible, right? And you could you could look at like when I I, I put up some of my God of War fights and 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 uh, like well I think I put up I, I put up a what what's that that last last fight with the Val, with the, the Valkyrie whatever this Valkyrie's this, the the last Valkyrie and Ragnarok's name is you could see like I try to use all the moves. It's a little bit difficult against like Valkyries because like some of that shit you can't pull off because they're not you know they they not sweet like that so you can't use everything but I try to actually tap into all the different moves and things like that so my point is it's not that easy to just relearn that like fight flow and that muscle memory for me at least maybe some of y'all niggas is taskmaster and y'all literally have this uh you know this god-given ability to you know, see something and your muscle memory never leaves and all that shit. Maybe, maybe y'all better than me. Fine. Uh, okay. So that's my only problem. I'm, I want to play this. I probably will play it. I'll probably live stream it. But like I said, I feel like I'm going to be very, very rusty and my timing and everything is going to be very off. I'm going to be sloppy. I'm going to, I'm going to be ass. Uh, what is this big, big walk? This is from the team behind un, the untitled goose game. Don't care. Uh, Prince of Persia, the lost crown. Uh, I, I already have this pre-ordered. This comes out January 11th. That's a day one for me. I look forward to it. Yeah. Um, Hellblade 2. They finally showed some combat. Now, so that's the, what we've been waiting for for a long time. And uh, I think the combat looks good, but I'm not sure if they really showed any like new abilities and combat mechanics, right? That's the only thing. I'm not sure if they were, if it's just, I'm not sure if it's new, new combat or new animations. That's the thing is, is, you know, it looks impressive. Don't get me wrong. I was, I, you know, I'm, I'm one of those who loved the first game, but I'm not sure if those are new abilities and new game play, gameplay mechanics or just new animations, new fighting animations. I don't know. Uh, but either way, it looks good. And um, I still need to see more. And I, I hate when they... I just want to see an actual gameplay clip that is not chopped up and highly edited of the combat. That's that's what I need to see how it actually plays. So um, and it still doesn't have a release date, which is strange. Um, Come in 2024, but no actual release date. I, I would have sworn this game is going to be in an early spring game. I, I would have sworn on that. Uh, so it's just weird because you got to remember this game. Came, what was it? 2016. Hold on. Hellblade. Was it 2016 this came out? 2017. It was 2017. Bro, there are games that came out in 2017 that released their sequel to that game two years ago. So this game is like, bro, y'all taking mad long with this. But I, I think, um, I think. I think Hellblade 2 is probably going to be a Game of the Year nominee um, for 2024. I think so. I think so. Um, I think it has just all the, all the things needed for it. Okay, uh, Kamori. Um, so, so this is from, also, again... Some uh, a studio by former Tango GameWorks uh, developers, and it it looked it looked okay. Um, I really I'm kind of indifferent about it. I don't have too much to say about it uh, from from this CG trailer. And yeah, a lot of this stuff was CG. A lot of you know a lot of it wasn't necessarily gameplay. Uh, okay, uh, no rest for the wicked. I'm a big fan of Moon Studios. You know who made Ori. Uh, and this is a hack and slash game and it looks it looks you know I'm I'm a Moon Studio fan bro I know what they what they're making um I'm I'm going to like it kind of has like that same art style it seems to be a little grittier darker I'm into it I'm I'm into it um Sega announced a a bunch of the, a, a, re, a return for a bunch of their games which a lot of them I don't really care about like I don't have that uh you know that nostalgia and that fandom for it like a lot of people do um Crazy Taxi, I really don't care. Uh, Streets of Rage, I do care about. I like really like Streets of Rage. Jet Set Radio, I don't care about. Um, I know a lot of, oh my God, Jet Set Radio. I'm sorry, I'm not one of those people who care. 
Uh, Shinobi and Golden Axe uh, do look good. I would probably play those. So Shinobi, Golden Axe, and Streets of Rage, I'm, I'm, I'm most likely going to play. Crazy Taxi and, and Jet Set Radio, I don't care about, which is probably the opposite of most opinions. Most people probably care about Crazy Taxi and Jet Set Radio the most. I'm the opposite. Uh, okay, Dragon Ball Sparking Zero. So we saw this game before at another uh, at another event. We just didn't have the um the name for it, and I hate this name, Sparking Zero. I just feel like they just be coming up with the dumbest names for these like Dragon Ball games, and I don't like these. I don't play none of these Dragon Ball games. I don't care about them. I'm not. I, I I've never even finished the Boo Saga, so I'm not even like an anime person like that. Um. But I, I don't know. I just feel like every time I see a Dragon Ball game, most of the time, like, bro, these, the, to me, some of y'all may, may hate me for this. These seem, seem like glorified rehashes and remakes because it's like, bro, a lot of them be touching on the, the, the like parts of the series that the previous games have done because this is like, this is in the Budokai series, right? So it's like, are, are they doing the same sagas over again? Just adding the the latest saga to it? That's what it seems like to me. Either way, I don't care. I don't care about Dragon Ball Z. Um, uh, Dead by Daylight spinoff. Uh, this is from Until. This is from uh, Supermassive Games. Uh, it's a single player game set in the Dead by Daylight universe. I don't care. Uh, Visions of Mana. Uh, so this is the new game in the Mana series. I don't really care. I'm not really, uh, not really. I don't think these, these RPGs are bad, but yeah, I just give me dragon quest, bro. I don't care about mana. Give me dragon quest. Um, yeah, let's see. Uh, rise, rise of Ronin. Um, so this is the, you know, samurai, um, eh, well, should we call everything a samurai game? I guess it's technically a samurai game from Team Ninja, um, and it's coming out, it's got a release date, March 20, 22nd. You know what I keep confusing this with? Um, I keep confusing this game with that other, like, samurai game, uh, which is Phantom Blade Zero, I think it's called. Because Phantom Blade Zero, even though I, I feel like some of that game looks uh, too, too good to be true, you know, I'd be real skeptical. Like, ah, I don't know if the game is actually going to look like that or play like that. But I keep confusing these two. And I think Phantom Blade Zero actually looks a little bit more based on the little we've seen. It, it, it interests me more because this looks like Rise of the Ronin kind of just looks like another version of what Team Ninja has been doing, which is Neo. Um, because I, I, I felt like, uh, whatchamacallit, uh, the game they released earlier this year, which, which I beat, uh, what was it called again? Oh yeah. Wolong Fallen, Des uh, Fallen Dynasty. I felt like Wolong was just Neo 3 and, <laughs> and kind of, this just looks like Neo 4 to me. That honestly, that's, that's how I feel about all this stuff. Like all this stuff is just Neo. It's just I'm not saying it's the exact same, but it feels like they just build on top of another on another and but just don't have the Neo name. And I've played and I've played and beat all these games, so I'm going to play this, but I'm not like super excited for this, really. All right. Now, Kojima. Oh, God, I'm so sick of talking about this man and, and the bullshit that he gets away with. And this man could literally release anything, do anything. And nobody holds him accountable. Nobody calls him out. He just puts out abs absolute bullshit that's not even a game. He just put, he could put out a trailer of, of nonsense. Y'all have no idea what's even happening in the trailer. It doesn't even look like a video game. And people are like, oh my God, Kojima's a genius. You, you know what Kojima reminds me of? Kojima and, and anything he does reminds me of the episode of the, uh, the, episode of the Boondocks. Where and it was the I believe it was the episode of, you know, the R. Kelly episode. And let me let me let me land. Y'all gonna see where I'm going with this. I'm not saying the actions of Kojima are parallel to the actions of a, a horrible person like R. Kelly. But my point is the episode highlighted. Listen, this man could literally commit the most heinous, horrible acts against humanity. He's he's literally a piece of shit. And as long as he released some music. 
that people thought was fire, oh, they let all that other shit slip under the rug. Let me be clear. I think R. Kelly is a piece of shit. Am I still playing his music? Absolutely. Fuck, what fuck are you talking about? I'm still playing that. Them songs is hits. He's a piece of shit, but them, them, you can't deny them songs is hits. That's another topic. Let's not get into that. Um, but it, it's, it's like with Kojima, y'all have him under this, like, this gaming legend and this gaming developer rock star and, and legend status that no matter what he puts out, it's like, oh, we're going to praise him. Oh, he, he's a genius. At least with the other guy who's a horrible person, the music be fire. With Kojima, y'all let him get away. Bro, the dude came, came to the Game Awards or some awards the other year and just announced, hey, I got a podcast coming. And y'all let him do that shit. Y'all let this man have airtime to announce, hey, I have a podcast. Who else do y'all let do that bullshit? Nobody. This, may, this trailer doesn't even tell you nothing. It doesn't even look like a video game. Oh, oh, we're so excited. And bro, I literally said on Twitter, listen, whatever Kojima makes for Xbox, this is the Xbox exclusive game, I think, there, there's no way possible that he can release a, a dumber concept in a more garbage game than Death Stranding. I was wrong, at least based on this trailer. Maybe, maybe when they show more, it'll maybe that that could possibly change my mind. But bro, I, I think it's, it, this game is going to be some absolute bullshit. Some th this is literally once again Kojima just bored. This man is just bored. So I'm like, oh, I'm just going to do some out of the box random shit, and uh, because I can fucking get away with it. Oh, I'm sick of this man, bro. I'm sick of him. Y'all, y'all going deep throat him no matter what. So why am I even wasting my time? Let's let's keep moving. Uh, Jurassic Park survival. Um, this is a this was a previously canceled game from a while ago, and now they're bringing it back and doing it. Don't really care. Black Myth Wukong. Um, this looks good. It's coming out August 2020. Uh, August. 20th 2024 so we're finally get going to get to see how this game turns out it's been highly anticipated so uh excited excited for that the trailer looks really good I'm, I'm i'm really eager to see if a lot of the stuff they showed in that initial trailer we actually get to do it because i said uh some of this stuff seems to be pie in the sky we not it's not even actually going to be in the game all those just abilities that seeming that seemingly Oh, you can do anything you imagine and these wild abilities. I don't know if all that going to be in the game. Um, Suicide Squad. Yeah, let's not talk about that. I have n I, I played I played a test. I played a, uh, an alpha. Yeah, that game is not on my radar. I don't I do not care. Warframe don't care. Um, this game looks good. Tales of Kenzera Zao. Um, this looks like African Ori. I, I love the art style, love the combat. This is a day one for me um, where, whenever, whenever this comes out. It looks really good. Um, Don't Nod's a new game. Yeah, I'm not playing nothing from Don't Nod. The life, it, if you tell me life is strange, team, not playing it, don't care. Never will play it. Uh, What, what is this? I don't think I've, I don't think I've seen this. Trailer Berserker Kazan announced. Uh, I don't think I've, I think I might have missed this this one. Let me see. Let's go through this real quick. Yeah, I must have missed this one. I didn't see this. I missed this trailer. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't watch this. I'm not mad at this. This looks okay so far. Looks very over the top anime, unga, a little bit unga bunga. I'm not mad at it though. Action game, um, yeah, I got to see more, but that actually looks decent. Uh, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Um, so we got to see Sid, we got to see Dine, um, a bunch of characters that are gonna be in the second part. Yeah, uh, Final Fantasy. Y'all know how I feel about Final Fantasy VII. I'm very excited for this second part. Um. Part for part two, uh, and I, I already got my time taken off from work. I already put in my time, uh, my my PTO for like a few days, 
uh, for when this game comes out. Can't wait. Um, Apex Legends and Final Fantasy crossover. Don't care. Honkai Star Rail. Don't care. Skull and Bones has another release date after being delayed um, like for its eighth time. <laughs> it's coming out February 16th. Um, even though a lot of people are shitting on this game and because and, pretty much has been delayed so many times, I actually think this game could be a success. I won't be playing it because I'm not interested in this type of game, you know, uh, ship combat and all that stuff. But I, I think this game has an actual good chance of being successful because say what you want about Ubisoft. And I think they are like kind of like creatively corrupt and they make games like they're coming off a factory line. Um, they support their games. No matter like how the game launches, they're going to support it and try to keep it going um, so it could live as long as, as possible. That's one thing you can say about them. They support their games long term. And the fact that the only other game in this in this category is Sea of Thieves. So if you're a person who's into ship combat, you got Sea of Thieves, Skull and Bones. So just off that fact alone, even if the game is not great. I think you might have a fan base just off of that fact that there's not a lot of competition in that space. So I think it could still be successful. Um, be, whether it's good, good or not is a different, is a different uh, argument. Um, so Arc Arcane Leon is making a Blade game. Uh, this is the team behind Deathloop um, not, and, and Deathloop and Dishonor, not the team behind uh, Red what was that? What was that piece of shit called? Redfall? Yeah. Um, so here's the thing. So and, and I was talking about this on, on Twitter. I'm more interested in playing as Blade rather than Wolverine. Because I think Blade is a cooler, more interesting character from a story point of view, from a combat point of view uh, than Wolverine. So it's a character statement, not a game statement necessarily. Uh, as far as far as the developers, because you, if you ask me which game is going to be better, oh, hands down, Wolverine is going to be better. I, I, I trust Insomniac with a game um, with, with a Wolverine game more than I trust uh, Arcane Leon uh, with a Blade game to make it the best. Not that I think this game is going to be bad at all, but, I, I, you know, as far as who's going to make the better game. Yeah, I would bet on Insomniac. Um, but the character that's more interesting to me is definitely Blade. But here's what bothers me about this trailer. It's not even necessarily, because a lot of people talk about like the art style, which, you know, you, it doesn't necessarily indicate what the game is going to look like. Um, and by the way, they confirmed they just started working on this game. Like, we're not going to get this game for a while. This, this, the, the Bethesda account announced, yeah, we just started working on this. <laughs> so we're not going to get this for a while. We're not going to see it for a while. But what, what bothered me about this trailer, if the trailer... Um, is indicating, indicating, you know, what the game is going to be like. I didn't like the tone of it. The tone kind of felt very, like, lighthearted. It didn't feel dark. It didn't feel gritty. It's taking place in Paris. Okay, cool. Blade's original origin is that he was actually born in London. Um, cool. But I didn't like the tone of it. Like, it, it, it was originally in, in daytime and like, okay, cool. He's the day, you know, we know his name is the Daywalker and everything like that. The, I think the sun was shining and shit. Um, oh, let me, let me play. I think the sun was shining and shit, bruh. Like, this is not how I want a, want a, a Blade trailer to start out. Oh, it's, it looks like a great day in Paris. Oh, what, how, what a nice day. No, I want some dark. Horror, gritty shit. Not, not this. And he's he's like in a tattoo shop or some something. Like, no, bro. This is not the right tone for a Blade game. I need to see Dark Alley with a vampire and and Blade coming out the the you know coming out the alley with his sword and his gun. You know, killing the vent. That's how the a Blade trailer should be. Not the motherfucker like linked up in a. Oh, it wasn't. No, it's a barber shop. I said tattoo shop. Yeah, I don't. I don't want to see Blade getting getting a lineup. That's not. That's not the type. Jamming. Oh, he. Oh, he tapping his foot to some music. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. That's 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 not the right tone for a Blade game. That's not it. That ain't it, Chief. It's supposed to be dark, violent, gritty. So uh, that's what bothers me about it because it makes me feel like this game is not gonna be. 
the tone that I want it to be. That's what I'm concerned with. Um, so, but we'll see in like three, four years. Um, Twisted Metal season two was was announced. I, I'll watch that. I thought season one was it was okay enough to you know get. I got I was able to get through the whole thing. Um. So this game by Ten Cents uh, Lightspeed uh, LA Studio. It's a fully original. I hate I hate what the way they describe games. Triple uh, A futuristic open world game. I I looked at this. Uh, you know, it's. I thought the concept was was okay. Seemed like it might have a, a decent story. And then also, um, yeah, from Nexon, the last. Uh, then yeah, the next game was. Uh, wait, am I getting this confused? This was, yeah, this was the last Sentinel. This was the first, uh, what is this shit called? The first Descendant. Yeah, it's very like futuristic sci-fi type shit. Uh, I gotta see more. I don't, a lot of, like I said, a lot of these games I feel very indifferent about. Um, Zenless Zone Zero, don't care. Uh, Ten, Ten Chambers announces Den of Wolves. I looked at this. I don't, I, I don't really care this is the studio behind get the fuck out uh, it's a new sci-fi heist game uh, heist games has there really been any good heist games for real for real bro for real for real some people might say payday i don't i don't believe that um exo born uh, some more sci-fi bullshit yeah don't care um Uh, Fallout TV show. I'm gonna watch this. I never liked the Fallout games, but I'll watch the TV show. Um, new game. Um, Sean Murray, who you know is behind No Man's Sky, Light No Fire. Uh, looks like a you know looks like another MMO in the same vein as No Man's Sky. Not something I'm interested in. It looks cool, but not something I'm interested in. Uh, Stormgate. Uh, you know, this RTS. This RTS game I don't care about. Valen, I don't care. Final Fantasy 16 DLC. Uh, I still have to get to Final Fantasy 16. This is actually, I just finished Robocop and um, Persona 5 Tactica. And this is the next game on my list to play. Um, so that's actually what I'm literally just about to start on Final Fantasy 16. So um, I'll probably play the DLC when it comes out also. Uh, the, sh uh, the finals, I played like the finals, like the alpha a while ago. I didn't really care for it. Uh, Monster Hunter Wilds. If I was, if I like Monster Hunter, I would. This looks good. Um, it comes out 2025. It looks, you know, it looks impressive. But I don't like the way Monster Hunter games play, so that's a don't care for me. Uh, and Baldur's Gate 3 is now out on Xbox, and uh, they were supposed to announce it on stage, and the developer and and Larian just forgot. <laughs> it was like, oh, my bad, we forgot to tell y'all it's it's out on Xbox. So, uh, yeah, I, so is that all the, I think that was all the announcements, um, unless I missed something, but I'm pretty sure that was, that was everything. Um, did I touch on this, this bloom and hey, I didn't really care. Um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not mad that I, that I missed this, this game award show. Like, like I said, I feel very disinterested and, and just very indifferent about most of the shit that that was shown i think i was what 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 do i really care about like maybe three four games yeah i don't give a damn about most of this stuff bro i do not care yeah yeah i, I don't care i don't care hey let me know what y'all think about um everything that was shown and the the, the winners bro let me know y'all thoughts. Hit the like button. Hit the notification bell. Um, we'll talk about this stuff on Weapon Wheel. Don't miss Weapon Wheel this uh, this Sunday. Should be a good episode. Follow me on Twitter. Hit the like button. Hit the notification bell. All that good shit. I'll catch y'all on, on the next video. I'm out. Peace.